Topping today's news, the country's murder count already approaching double digits as three men lose their life. The Minister of Immigration encourages illegal migrants to leave or face a permanent ban from the country. A record number of illegal immigrants repatriated in 2022. And the Prime Minister meets with the U.S. Vice President. I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News. It's a pleasure to have you join us. In 18 hours, three young men have been shot and killed here in the capital, New Providence, pushing the country's murder count to nine within just 18 days of 2023. Active and aggressive police investigations have been launched into the latest killings with criminal detectives searching for the alleged shooters. The latest homicide occurred shortly before 2 a.m. today. According to police reports, the incident occurred on Ambrister Street, Fox Hill. With few details surrounding this incident, police reported that Neighbors heard gunshots and once outside met a 30-year-old male sitting in his vehicle, a burgundy Nissan Cube with gunshot injuries. The victim had just arrived at his residence. He was taken to hospital by a private vehicle where he shortly died around 4 a.m. on Wednesday morning. Police have not released the identity of the victim, save to say that he is believed to be a law enforcement officer. However, JCN news sources have identified him as Alvarez McCoy, a Royal Bahamas Defense Force Marine. Prior to that homicide, sometime around 9.30 p.m. on Tuesday night, police were alerted via shot spotter technology to gunshots discharged in the area of Shah's Drive off Sumner Street in Redline Acres. Officers responded and discovered a male with multiple gunshot injuries. Initial reports reveal that the 32-year-old victim was sitting in front of a residence when a male exited a black Suzuki Swift and fired multiple gunshots in his direction. Quick response by officers attached to Operation Ceasefire resulted in an 18-year-old male of Kennedy subdivision being arrested while attempting to flee the area on foot. Officers also recovered the vehicle involved in this incident in nearby bushes in the area. Uh, further, police are aggressively in search of a second male believed to be involved in this incident. It was just 13 hours prior to this incident that police were on the scene of a shooting in the area of Gibbs Lane and Infant View Road. There, the body of 33-year-old Dominic Daniel Berry, a.k.a. Brooke, a father of three, was found with multiple gunshot injuries. Police are actively investigating and appealing to members of the public who may have any information on any of these killings or any other serious crimes. To contact the police at Crime Stoppers, 328-TIPS. That's 328-8477. As police continue their aggressive fight with gun violence here in the country, Prime Minister Philip Davis met with United States Vice President Kamala Harris at the White House on Tuesday, where discussions were had on strengthening efforts to reduce the flows of guns that illegally enter the Bahamas from the United States. Prime Minister Davis and Vice President Harris also discussed strengthening efforts to combat illegal maritime migration one of the items relating to the two countries' bilateral relationships. The United States reaffirming their commitment to strengthening partnerships with the Bahamas and with the nations and people of the Caribbean. In a White House press statement, Vice President Harris also congratulated Prime Minister Davis on assuming the chairmanship of CARICOM and highlighted efforts through the U.S.-Caribbean partnerships to address the climate change crisis 2030, which involves energy security, uh, effects of climate change and other challenges facing the region. The two also discussed the ongoing situation in Haiti. The U.S. Vice President thanked Prime Minister Davis for the Bahamas' cooperation on migration. A statement from the Office of the Prime Minister notes that as Chairman of CARICOM, Prime Minister Davis believes it is important for the United States and other partners in the hemisphere to support Haitian-led efforts to stabilize that country and find a path forward out of the crisis they are now facing. Speaking to the immigration issue, 
in Parliament this morning, Keith Bell, the minister responsible for labor and immigration, while noting that there has been an influx of Cubans and Haitians intercepted in Bahamian waters in recent weeks. And while he sympathizes with the crisis that these two nations are facing, economic, political, and social hardships, it is the hope of the government that international communities will assemble resources to provide Haiti and Cuba with an economic package of debt forgiveness and aid to assist them with improving their economic outlook. Our Prime Minister, Honorable Madam Speaker, understands this imperative and has been working with the United States and CARICOM on these issues. Just yesterday, the Honorable Prime Minister would have met with the Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris, at the White House, to discuss such matters of mutual interest, including the importance of strengthening efforts to combat illegal maritime migration. Madam Speaker, whilst we hope and pray that the international community provides assistance to Haiti and Cuba, we must continue to protect our borders and the Bahamas and enforce our immigration laws. Add to that, Minister Bell sent a stern warning to migrants living and working in the Bahamas illegally, encouraging them to wind up their affairs and leave the country voluntarily or face major consequences. When one refers to irregular or illegal migrants, Madam Speaker, it often stirs up emotional responses. There are fears of job loss, overpopulation in our, over, in our urban areas, substandard housing, overflows in our clinic, and of course, medical facilities, and overcrowding in our schools. These concerns are all valid, and it is an irrefutable fact that the Bahamas cannot accept ever-increasing numbers of migrants without a corresponding deterioration of the quality of life for us all. This is why it is the position of this government that whilst those who enter the Bahamas legally are welcome, unlawful entrants are not. I therefore issue a stern warning to all those living illegally in this country to wind up your affairs and leave immediately. Minister Bell also spoke to the large number of migrants with work permit documentation, but who may be working outside the scope of their permits. He says the Progressive Liberal Party is the government that will put Bahamian interest first. Member of Parliament for Central and South Abaco, John Pinder, is speaking out against the unregulated communities on Abaco. The Abaco Member of Parliament says things are about to come to a boiling point. Pinder contends that it is either authorities act now or we risk the chance of losing the land on which our forefathers left us. I'm an Albuquerque. I've been there all my life. This is a, something that new just came around. We've had over 35 years of f &M representation in Albuquerque and I've never seen no real action as I'm seeing now. And I am hopeful, I'm optimistic, and we need, Albuquerque needs the help to take control and, and regain control of our, of our island. The Member of Parliament telling reporters that a multi-agency task force has been put together to properly address the immigration crisis. The uh, Ministry of Public Works has done their quantitative studies to know how many buildings, where they are, um, so, so we could bring up a proper approach. Um, the details of the matter I won't be able to say, but I am highly optimistic that this administration will actually do something about the growing, ever-growing problem we have. It's concerning to me because there isn't any sanitary infrastructure at hand and there isn't the proper permitting and things are being done that Bahamians and Al my fellow Albertonians can't do. We have to abide by the law. We, there is there's certain procedure in place that, that makes a, a safe place for everyone to live. And, and right now, the, those, those areas that we're, we're describing are, aren't doing that. And Member of Parliament Pinder says he is confident the task force will get this matter under control. The country has seen a record number of illegal migrants land in the country and be repatriated over the past year. The Minister of Immigration and Labor, Keith Bell, noting that most of these migrants are of Haitian and Cuban nationality and they are continuing to work to tackle the problem. Our Destiny Johnson has more in this next story. 5,000 illegal migrants were repatriated to their home countries in 2022, a record number of repatriations to take place in the Bahamas in a very, very long time. According to Minister of Immigration Keith Bell, just before the weekly cabinet meeting on Tuesday. Minister Bell provided the accurate number of repatriations for 2022. Last year, 
the government repatriated a total of 4,748 persons from the Bahamas, which was the largest number ever. And of that number, 3,349 persons were repatriated to Haiti, and 1,001 persons were repatriated to, the, to Cuba. Um, we would have repatriated persons to as far as Afghan, Afghanistan, to Egypt, Ecuador, Guyana, Jamaica, Mexico, Nicaragua, Pakistan, Romania, South Africa, Trinidad, Uganda, Turkey, Venezuela. Now, I would say that we would appreciate that, given what is happening with the Ukrainian war, that we have seen a significant increase in the number of persons coming, coming from Cuba. With claims by the official opposition and the leader of the Coalition of Independence, COI, that the government has not been doing enough to rectify the immigration woes, Minister Bell asserts that he is satisfied that the government is doing everything it can do at this stage. Uh, there are a number of matters which are under active investigation or are being actioned, and not just by um, the Ministry and the Department of Immigration, but by the Ministry of Works, by the Ministry of National Security. And I think it does uh, those officers a disservice. And I think it's really disingenuous of Mr. Bean and his cohorts to indicate that nothing much is being done. And again, I'm indicating to you and the Bahamian people that, first of all, um, the major islands of concentration, and as we'd appreciate uh, the Eleuthera, um, we, we see issues in um, Harbor Island. We know that Abaco is another uh, major concern. And so therefore, we are focusing on those islands and we're taking necessary action to ensure that we bring peace and harmony back to those islands. In addition to that, the immigration minister goes on to note that because of the major gang warfare in Haiti, many have been trying to flee the island. Due to this, the immigration department has seen an influx of permits to reside. And I have, would have indicated to the media that we would have, I received in, a, in excess of 500 applications for consideration for permits to reside. That is, we have persons of Haitian descent are here in the Bahamas and they're asking for us to bring their relatives out of Haiti given the circumstance. And we have not, under, in, in, in most circumstances, approved any of those uh, permits to reside. And it is unfortunate that uh, Haiti has found itself in that challenge. It is a matter which has been addressed at the international level. Minister Bell asserts that migration is an age-old problem and Bahamians must act in one voice and be sincere in actions to ensure that persons here illegally are caught, persecuted, deported, and placed on the restricted list. For JCN News, I'm Destiny Johnson. Thanks for that report, Destiny. And finally, in this segment, Linden Penling International Airport experiencing some challenges this morning as some air traffic controllers did not show up to work. The disruption caused a nearly two-hour delay for at least one international Bahamas Air flight. In a statement released by aviation officials today, the delays are attributed to an ongoing issue surrounding the screening of air traffic controllers by the airport authority. Here, Minister of Tourism, Aviation and Investments, Chester Cooper, commenting on the matter before entering Parliament this morning. The uh, Direct Aviation is, is dealing with the matter. It was an issue related to the security protocols. And I think there has to be a meeting of the minds between the air traffic controllers and the airport authority as to what the international standard is for, uh, for screening. I think there are standards set out by uh, civil aviation and that has to be agreed once and for all between the parties and the airport authority would be mandated to carry that uh, protocol out in a, a humane way. So I'm satisfied the matter is being discussed and uh, it's an issue that's going to be resolved in the best interest of aviation and the traveling public. After an immediate intervention and consultation with stakeholders, all air traffic services returned to normal operations by 8 a.m. Union President Kimsley Ferguson was very critical of the aviation minister, alleging that he has made several attempts to meet with the minister but was unsuccessful. When asked to respond to the claim, Minister Cooper says this much. I've spoken with Hinsey McKinsey on a number of occasions. Uh, I have no pending requests for a meeting. 
uh, from the union, and I'm always available to meet with the union at any time. Uh, so the reports that uh, you are receiving of attempts to uh, have a meeting with me is simply untrue. According to Director of Aviation, a meeting has been proposed for Wednesday to effectively address all outstanding matters. Uh, we'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.